Hi guys, Team G Rainbow Dash here, at uh, Jacob McEachin. Um, I got a request on one of my videos for a tutorial on how to do my controllers, so yeah. It was on this controller right here. And first of all, to get them apart, if you're going to be doing a wireless, you need a T8 wrench. And a T8 wrench kind of looks like this. It's going to be like a little star point at the end. I don't know if you can see that too well. It's going to almost look like a star. But um, not many places sell them. You might be able to get one up at Radio Shack or your local auto store. But it needs to be size T8. Um, if you're doing a wired controller, you don't have to worry about that. It can just be a small flathead. It's a Phillips head screw, screw in there that you can use a flathead if you want. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. You got to... I'm doing this one right now because I've already done my other ones. See? So, um... I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'm going to unscrew the screws. There's a screw here, 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 and here. And also if you haven't peeled your sticker back, there's one hiding behind this sticker right here. So you're going to want to go ahead and take all the screws out and peel the sticker off. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to do a time lapse for you guys really quick so you don't have to wait here and watch me do this. Alright guys, so I got the screws out, and as you can see, it's still one piece. All the screws are gone, they're all sitting over there, yeah, let's just boop, be together, don't be lonely guys. Um, you're going to want to take the housing apart from the controller, you'll have your rumblers, uh, you can take those out if you want, they, that's only if really you're doing a rapid fire mod or something, but um, if you're just customizing it for now, you can leave them in. Um, you really do need to take the memory board out, the motherboard for the controller, which is this, all the electronic parts and the buttons. So go ahead and pop this little part off. It's really easy. Boom. Take this off. And set that over there. Alrighty. So now you're just left with the shell and these buttons are just... Boop. And then you've got the D-pad left in. Now the D-pad is different from all the other buttons, it doesn't just come out, so you flip it over, take this piece, and you should have a little tiny screwdrivers in there, look. Should be little screws, one right in there where my screwdriver is, and one right in there. So you can go ahead and take that out, it's a very tiny Phillips set screwdriver. So I'm sure once you see it on your controller, um, you can find the right size to fit. I'll go ahead and time lapse this for you and take the screws out and then I'll show you how to take the D-pad out. Alright, so once you have the screws loose, you can go ahead and knock one out. There's one. Let me get the other one really quick. Come on, little guy, you can make it. Derp -a -derp -a -derp. Oh, he's really in there. Um Screw you too, screw. Anyways, you get the point. Undo the screws. <laughs> Once you have them undone, um, you have to go in. And the place where the screws weren't, the screws are in this spot and this spot. What you're going to have to do is go into this place and there will be like little clips in there. So you're going to want to unclip those clips. And I'll show you in a second and pop it up. Alright. I ended the clips. Once you undo those clips, you can just turn it over, boom, falls right off, see? Here's your D-pad, here's your housing for the D-pad. So go ahead and put those off to the left together. I had to use this as a model controller because my screws and the other one are jammed, but I'm still going to paint that one. So um, yeah. Once you have all that done, make sure you have all of your stuff that you don't want paint on out of the way. You're going to need, if you want to do a multi-layer like this, you're going to need to buy three different cans of paint. The two colors, like I used here, were blue and red. So you're going to need those two colors and a can of this, which is gloss finish. And that basically just keeps the... It's a protective coat for the paint. It keeps it from wearing as easy on your um, whenever you're holding it in your hand. 
So you're going to need these cans. You can choose any color other than that. You don't have to use red and blue. I'm going to do a red tiger today, but yeah. All right, I'm back. And um, sorry about that. What else you need is, boom, painter's tape. Doesn't have to be scotch blue, but it needs to be painter's tape because that'll keep the paint from um, mixing with the other color. All right, hey guys, I'm back. Um, yeah, but you also need painter's tape which is, I use scotch blue, this is scotch blue, or 3M tape actually, but painter's tape, it just basically keeps the paints from leaking and getting into um, each other, but yeah, you're gonna have to do multiple layers, I'll do a time lapse again, while, so you guys literally don't have to sit and watch paint dry, um, <laughs> but yeah. You can take your bumpers off if you want to paint those. I preferably just take them off because they will get paint in between the little wedges here and they get stuck and it turns into a little hassle and you don't want to deal with all the crap. But yeah, so we have our controller here. Um, I'll just show you the front face plate and do that for right now because the back, no one freaking looks at the underside of your controller, so it doesn't really matter. But I'll go ahead and do a red tiger on this one. So, um... What you're going to want to do is, the Red Tiger is actually a little bit more of a hassle, so you're going to want to take your painter tape and pretty much cover all this, the entire controller. And so I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so I've got the front place of the controller covered. So wherever you want to do Tiger print, it's actually really cheesy how it works, but it's how I did this one. You basically, it's it's almost kind of just like a tear print, but you have to tear away from the controller. So grab a piece on the underside and just look. I'll see if I can hold it up. Here, this will work. I'll do this. So, guys, you can see it now. All right. Um, you basically though. It's super easy. Sorry if I'm prolonging this longer than it needs to be. I'm having to get on my hands and knees for you guys. Um, take the edge and as easy as pie, just peel little pieces off. And if you need to, grab like a screwdriver or something. You can go up under it. Kind of cut. Cut away again. Grab that piece right there. And make tears in the cloth. I didn't get the full one on that. And you can make tears in the cloth like that. And so just do that all the way around. Wait, I'll do another one really quick. Sorry if it's a little bit shaky, I need to get a stand for my phone. Alright, and just... Tear it off. See? And if you want to, you can touch up. Like, I see how it's like a little bit blocky right there. So you can go ahead and like... I don't have I usually use a razor blade if I'm doing something like this. Kind of make it look natural. If you would like. You don't have to do this. It's to my preference. I'm not really, I wouldn't call myself a perfectionist, but when something looks like shit, I kind of want to fix it. <laughs> Alrighty. Um. You guys can skip through this part if you want. It doesn't really matter. All right, but once you get that done, um, you have multiple tears. I'll pause it. I'm going to do a couple more just so that it looks good, but you get the idea of how to do that. Just make tears in this stuff. So I'll pause it, go ahead and do more, and then I'll be right back. All righty, so I'm back. Um, so I made multiple tears. They can vary. I don't know. It's different whenever you tear them. But, okay, you see how I have it, right? 
you've got multiple layers, make sure all your tape around your edges is pressed up so then that way it tape doesn't get on any like parts of the controller that you don't want it to. So yeah, just go ahead and press all these. Make sure you do that. Alright, and whatever color you want the tears to be, like how this, I've got my tiger print on these are like blue. I just call them tear print. I like the way it looked. But see how it's kind of it's blue? I'm gonna do this one red this time, but pick whatever color you want. You need to make sure you have this too. This is for after you paint. So get my paint ready here. Like I'm using Valspar paint primer all in one. Spray paint. And so what you're gonna want to do is go ahead and just spray a coat on there. And make sure you cover it really good. Now read the instructions for the paint can. I know I always put a little bit more on than is needed for the first um, coat. But yeah. So go ahead and let that dry. I'll come back once it dries. Alrighty guys, I'm back. And I only used one layer for right now. Because, you know, I don't feel like doing two layers. But you usually do two layers of paint. Um, follow, just follow the instructions on the paint can and once you put those layers on you gotta have this gloss finish um, make sure it bonds to plastic I just got all my stuff up at um, Lowe's or Home Depot wherever you have near, near y'all but um, yeah you just spray a coat on of this make sure it's a good coat too don't you can be generous with this stuff because it's basically going to keep the paint protected and keep it from rubbing off on your controller. Alright, and so give that, I think it's a, whatever it says on the can, give that time to dry. I'll be back once it's finished and I'll show the finished product.